Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial video by Snowbly Jordson. Uh, today we're going to be covering the P51 Mustang. This is a very good plane, um, very good performance, and uh, sometimes decent weaponry, and a lot of times terrible matchmaking. Just absolutely uh, horrible matchmaking that you can not really overcome um, by playing well. I guess you can see in this uh, game, actually kind of took some pot shots on a P63. Uh, I basically wanted him to lose his altitude advantage. I'm just kind of trying to make him dodge and uh, do evasive maneuvers. And as you can see, I was completely successful. It's kind of a gambit because I went up into a stall in that position. Um, but eventually it worked. He's pretty much out of the fight, but as you can see, he got two LA-7s right next to me. I'm going to try to take one out really quickly, and I'm hoping that my ally will get on the other one, and uh, we can kill them uh, fairly quickly and uh, win the fight that way. Unfortunately, most of my team, or half of my team, is bombers, and they're not going to help, of course, the fight between fighters at all. So, um... Not really much I can do, and I went into this fight knowing that, and that's why I went on this guy, even though there's two of them. I knew I pretty much had to kill one quickly, or else um, wouldn't have much of a chance. Unfortunately, as you can see, uh, a lot of times the guns on the P-51, they just don't do the damage you're needing. And uh, during that uh, chase, um, me and the other guy, I knew there was another guy right behind me, I can see from my radar. This guy's right next to me. I figure as long as I'm moving and dodging and following this guy in all of his turns and loops, the guy behind me is probably not going to have a good shot on me. And I was correct. Um, I dodged a little bit late there at the end, after the guy started flying in basically a straight line. I knew um, the guy behind me, well, I sensed the guy behind me was probably closing in. Now, unfortunately, I dove down below the clouds and... Um, I lost him in a high G uh, turn. I should have probably kept going straight, just straight lined away from the battle uh, after I had done that uh, that first loop that I did and tried to get away from him there because the energy retention and top speed of the Mustang is a tiny bit better than the LA-7. Uh, unfortunately, the LA-7 can turn a little tiny bit faster than the uh, P-51. And I would say, as far as head-ons, the normal LA-7 is not as good as the Mustang, but the LA-7B is better because it has uh, three cannons. As you can see here, I got on LA-7 in another game, blow him up instantly. There's really nothing, well, there's not much you can do um, as a Mustang with an LA-7 on you. There's not much an LA-7 can do um, when he has a Mustang on his tail. So they're very, very similar in performance. As you can see, a uh, King Cobra just tried to dive on me, overspeed crashed. Um, yeah, the high G maneuver, or high G maneuverability, high speed maneuverability, um, high speed dives, all very, very easy with the Mustang. Very hard to rip your wings off. If you want to try it out, you can do a test flight, but um, this thing can pull a lot of Gs and you don't really have to worry too much about uh, ripping your wings off or overspeed crashing or anything like that. Um, after killing a guy and having a guy suicide on me and try to kill me and die uh, in an overspeed crash, my team is winning pretty handily and I was about to farm ground targets actually because I figured everyone was above me and uh, all the other team was going to die. Fortunately, I am watching my radar and watching out around me and I see this uh, Yak-9 coming at me. So here you can see he did a high yo-yo maneuver to try to turn around towards me whereas I um, lost some altitude in the turnaround towards him. So I had a lot more speed to turn. Uh, he was kind of in a stall out, uh, not turning very fast at all. Of course he may have been retaining more energy but I was able to turn around onto him much faster and get uh, a basically crippling shot on him. And uh, that's what the P-51 is very good at. 
getting a shot on an enemy plane that will give you much superior maneuverability in the future. And uh, especially against Spitfires, a lot of times you can uh, go head to head with the Spitfire. I wouldn't go head to head with the VC, so that's four cannons. But other Spitfires, you could probably risk it. Um, the problem with the Spitfire, and as you can see, again, half my team is bombers, and it makes it really hard to play in P51 because most of your team will be bombers a lot of the time, or at least you'll have more bombers than the enemy team, which means you're basically in a dogfight with uh, very uneven odds. Uh, fortunately for me, uh, my team is quite a bit better than the enemy, and the enemy also has quite a few land casters. Um, so the Spitfire dodges a head-on. If you see someone wants to avoid doing a head-on with you, go for the head-on. You're completely safe going for a head-on if the other guy is trying to dodge you. So if you can make him dodge you and lose a lot of energy while he's doing it, then um, you're going to put yourself into a great position. As you can see here, I chase this guy down a uh, fairly low altitude, but I'm going to pay attention to where I am. I'm going to do a, a high uh, backflip there to try to get my altitude back up, uh, recover from the high Gs, see who's around me, and then plan my next attack. Because I don't need to rush into uh, killing the guy below me. And I see this guy, I'm going to help out my team, uh, try to get a couple hits off on him. And uh, he goes up into, of course, a yo yo I'm not going to follow him. I don't want to put myself into a stall right next to him. So instead, I'm going to keep up my speed. And against Spitfires, really, you need to keep up your speed unless you've wounded them significantly because they can outturn you quite substantially. And um, the, uh, the highest rank Spitfire or the American Premium Spitfire really has a lot of engine power and can uh, beat you in a su sustained climb amazingly well. In fact, even in a zoom climb, it can mostly match you. The thing about the Spitfire is it has a, a control lockup at high speeds. As you can see there, I'm just going to uh, assist this guy in uh, getting the Spitfire down here at low level. As you can see, get the assist, and I've done uh, my job in this game. And the rest is Landcasters, so we're going to move on to the next one. As you can see, always look around when you're diving. Um, I'm looking around, seeing who's around. A lot of times uh, the fight will be going on. A huge fur ball down a low altitude, which is a really uh, bad thing for the P-51. The P-51, I believe, excels in one-on-one -on -one dogfights. It just doesn't have the firepower to do multiple enemies. If the enemies are Japanese fighters at lower altitude than you, other than, of course, the N1K, uh, then you can do fine because you can kill Japanese fighters very quickly and very easily with your 50 cals. But against anything else, a lot of times uh, you just don't have the firepower. Luckily, um, I'm diving on people, so I have a really uh, well set up shots in this uh, and can take them out very quickly. As you can see, I'm trying to defend my allies and uh, set myself up for good shots. You can see after I killed the first guy, I went up into a uh, kind of a high yo-yo there or high backflip. That was just um, to get up more altitude. I knew everyone was at basically at ground level um, dogfighting, so I could pretty safely do a maneuver like that. Puts me at fairly high altitude and in a great position to go on someone else. And my initial plan was to save my ally here. Unfortunately, he died before he could really help me, and it was a three-on-one here. So I just decided, uh, whatever, I'll go head-to-head -head with this Yak-3. Uh, Yak-3 is not a good plane to go head-to-head -head with. It has way too much firepower. And you can see I crit him, but I died myself. Uh, now this is a Japanese versus Japan game. Unfortunately, Japan also has a, one of the best boom and zoomers for its level in the FWA5. And uh, you can see I'm just going to go straight down when this guy's um, near me. Of course, they get an air spawn, and you have to take off from the ground, so the FW is going to be always way above you, and it's uh, incredible 
map imbalance that's game breaking <laughs> but it's what you have to live with if you want to play the pvp one so uh yeah enemy fighters that can boom and zoom very well and have lots of firepower and spawn above you in the air but as you can see here i uh, went into a dive and eventually pulled out of it um, lost him in the clouds and retained a lot of my altitude and instead of just hanging around at high altitude uh, with everyone above me spotting me uh, the FW could easily come out of the clouds and kill me from underneath uh, he would probably be able to spot me because of his allies I'm going to use my altitude just to get up a lot of speed and come and help my uh, allies that are dogfighting over here now you can see my just awful terrible aim uh, but being that that is a Japanese fighter, I probably did enough damage that um, he's not going to be any trouble to kill in this next pass. And that's uh, the thing about Japanese fighters, you really can play against them differently. Still, I would not recommend letting a guy live after one pass, but as you can see, this guy's uh, prop is already, uh, well his engine's dead. So I'm going to go off of him. As soon as I see that, and I'm going to go try to help my ally here. Um, again, I'm watching my radar, trying to line up my target. You don't need to uh, come out of your high G uh, turns if you have an idea of where the guy is relative to you, and you're watching your radar. Of course, you cannot outturn the zero. <laughs> I almost shot my ally there, unfortunately. You cannot outturn the zero, so you're going to have to predict where he's going. Your roll rate is fairly bad so as you can see there I was predicting that guy was gonna go in that turn here comes the FW again and here part of my instinct said oh I'm gonna shoot him and part of my instincts luckily the stronger part said I should dodge him so I ended up dodging him and uh, uh, going head-on right before the dodge is a great way to dodge because it gives them the smallest deflection shot that they can get basically now of course that FW uh, went into a very high yo-yo I'm not sure why it went all the way over that way um, could have probably gone straight up and come in at a better angle but he's gonna come back in as you can see there I seamlessly took shooting down the zero into turning into the FW and uh, then rolling over uh, slightly upside down in order to make it very hard for him to shoot me. And uh, probably he saw me evading him already and didn't think it was worth it to try to line up a shot. Of course, FW has an excellent roll rate, so it's possible that he could have hit me there. Um, and now you're going to see how bad the 50 cals are against German planes. Again, against Jap Japanese planes, uh, usually you can get some great results, even sniping people from long distances, but against Germans, um, here I'm just trying to get him off my ally, but he's just ignoring me, flying right through my bullets, um, casually shooting down my ally, um, and I'm, as you can see, my ammo is in the red, so I'm trying to conserve as much as possible, but uh, eventually I do manage to shoot him down. It just takes a lot of bullets. And the P-51 does not have a lot of bolts, so you really want to conserve your ammo, uh, especially when you're fighting against Japan or Russia, or Germany and Russia, sorry. Japan, not so much. As you can see here, I was about to overshoot him, so I go into a high yo-yo and turn around back just to see him crash into the ground from that crit. And after that, another FW uh, zoomed down on me and one hit me and killed me instantly, but that's just how the game goes. I was pretty much out of ammo, so not much I could do. Okay, as you can see in this game, I fly forward. I'm in front of and somehow above most of my allies, even the premium Spitfires. Okay, if you're in a premium Spitfire, please do not get outclimbed by a P-51. That's horrible. But I did outclimb him, um, and got to the enemy before everyone else, so I'm just going to try to lead these FWs back into my allies. Um, not that I want some other ally to die first, but 
um, just gonna try to use my uh, higher position than them to go on anybody that goes on them. And if the enemy gets tunnel vision on me, it'll be easy allies for easy kills for my allies. Uh, of course, this FW just went off me uh, fairly quickly as soon as they saw other guys, and they're gonna climb up, um, try to get some more altitude so they can boom and zoom uh, my team better. Of course, I'm not gonna have any of that. I'm gonna try to uh, just fire a couple of shots into an FW and then dodge. I was a little late on the dodge, um, but he was turning towards me, so I figured it would take him a while to line up a shot, and it did. Came out a little bit lucky there. Gonna just be watching all around me. As uh, usual, the enemy is all above me to start out with, which is a huge advantage in Holy Thunder. Just having that altitude advantage, you can catch your enemy off guard and kill them in an instant uh, just with a tiny bit of lapse in awareness from your enemy. Of course, as I was flying in a straight line, a lot of times Germans will not know that you have as much speed as you do have. And so I'm able to um, turn around on this guy, use up pretty much all my speed, but I got it just enough into range that I was able to um, get a lucky fire on him. And uh, then I'm going to go at an F. If you know anything about the FWs, the F version is not very maneuverable. Also, it doesn't climb all that well. So as soon as I see this guy um, in front of me, not aimed towards me, I know I have a kill on him uh, as long as none of his allies come to help. And I do not snipe him here uh, in a second. This is going to look like a an amazing kill shot here. Watch this. Oh, line it up, line it up. I'm really bad at using my rudder somehow in mouse aim. I'm not sure. Aircraft destroyed! That was actually the guy set on fire, of course. As you can see, this guy is still right in front of me. He's diving really well. I don't know how that plane dives that well. I'm gonna try to just tickle him a little bit with these 50 cals. I have quite a bit of ammo left, uh, my team is doing really well, uh, so I was just trying to get him to dodge, um, turn maybe, do something uh, to get him away from my ally Spitfire. I don't really want him going and shooting down my ally before I can get there, because then it will be a 1v2. Of course, uh, he just ignores my shots and flies straight in towards the Spitfire, which is probably the correct maneuver. Um, FWs can also dodge really well without losing hardly any speed. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous, not realistic at all. Take a lot of bullets, dodge, and still be just as fast as you. But it's just something that you have to deal with, be patient. Um, and in this case, I uh, unfortunately let my ally die because there's really nothing I can do uh, about it. Um, here I'm going to go into this fight with a lot of speed. I see that the FW is going on the Spitfire, but as you can see he's not maneuvering. Uh, he's not choosing to chase the Spitfire. Um, as you can see there, I was kind of thinking about going towards the FW to take him down first, um, but then I chose to instead keep my altitude, which turned out to be an okay um, an okay plan because the FW actually didn't go to chase the Spitfire. Had the FW gone to chase the Spitfire, I probably would have taken a pass on him first and then um, just tried to uh, get the BF-109 off me. As it is, I went, uh, went up to save my altitude, save my energy uh, for the fight with the BF-109. I avoided the BF-109 because I saw the FW down at low altitude for an easy kill. Uh, I went in make sure he's dead and he actually crashed, avoiding me from the other guy. Then I'm running from the BF-109. I gain a little bit of altitude, lose a little bit of speed, because I know in the split S I'm gonna lose um, less energy if I'm going slower. Because if you do a maneuver at a high speed, you're gonna lose a lot of energy. If you do it at a lower speed, not so much energy. So I traded some energy for altitude, and uh, that 
worked out really well um, for being able to chase this the guy down. As you can see, it's the ex almost exact opposite situation as from the beginning of the split S. Um, what this guy could have done is he could have gone straight up into a stall as I did a split S and perhaps gotten a good shot off on me, or at least been in a better position. As it is, he's in the VF109G, I don't know if it's G6, G2, G10, whatever, but it cannot outmaneuver the uh, Mustang. Um, it's really been nerfed fairly hard, so it has good guns, but doesn't have much else on the Mustang. And I'm going to uh, just fly in a straight line and try to catch up on the uh, distance here. He was trying to climb. He realized that's not going to work, so he tries to dive. And I'm just going to dive with him. I know I'm going to eventually catch up with him. But here you can see I'm firing some shots. It's actually because I don't want him to fly into my team and someone else get the kill. I'm a little bit greedy here, yes. Um, but there's basically no one else on the enemy team, so I really like this kill. And as you can see, I'm catching up with him because he dove straight to the ground very quickly, and I did a more sustained dive. So here, as you can see, I have a ton more speed than he does, and I'm able to very easily catch up to him and get in a lot of hits. As you can see, cut it back to zero throttle, uh, putting on combat flaps to slow down so I don't overshoot him, and getting the kill um, very easily. Hope that helps you play the P-51 Mustang. Leave a like if you liked, subscribe for more, see you in the sky.